Hi, Rich Toronto in the TMC Newsroom here at Interop 2009 in Las Vegas. Uh, welcome to our show today. Thanks for watching. Uh, we've got some great guests from Verizon Business. We've got uh, Jonathan Wynn and Danelli Young. How are you? Good. Well, nice Good. to see you. Thanks. Thanks for being on our show. I know that you've got some uh, big news, two announcements in different areas. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about them, please? I'm happy to go. Um, we are announcing some really enhancements to uh, our reporting capabilities for our private IP product, which is our MPLS network service, uh, really expanding the capabilities to give customers more visibility into the network, uh, extending that visibility down into the LAN devices so that customers can take a look at it from an application perspective, but also do root cause analysis and uh, event correlation so that as they find issues and events happening in the network, they can actually remedy those and get the network back up and running. So really expanding the visibility so that they can have a good inventory of what they've got, but also find the events as they happen. So uh, again, these are all cloud-based solutions. So all of these reporting capabilities are embedded in the network. And so customers can do it in a very cost-effective and efficient fashion. And it seems that uh, cloud-based computing is one of the buzzwords at this event. Yes. So it seems like you're going to be rolling out more and more cloud Absolutely. solutions? Absolutely. Um, what we found is we, you know, we do offer customers um, solutions that, are, that have uh, premise equipment in, uh, with them. Um, and those are good solutions as well. But what we've tried to do is embed a lot of the functionality in the network so customers can really, via a web-based uh, portal, can tap into the, the capabilities and leverage those tools without having to deploy devices on, in all their locations, which is really more cost-effective for them. So Now, is there a need for open APIs for access or any APIs to access any of this functionality? Um, now, what, what happens at the customer's uh, locations is they actually download the software modules. And it's, it's in partnership with CA. So okay. uh, again, it's uh, taking the best of breed uh, product in the market and really uh, incorporating it and modifying it for our network and for our service and for our customers. And so customers will download those, those um, software uh, modules onto their routers or their devices sitting on the prem and it's those, um, software, that software that allows them to tap into the, into the network. And again, the network is uh, uh, we, it's agnostic to devices, anybody's devices, anybody's service. Uh, so it can be uh, our service, our MPLS service, it can be one of our competitors, but the customer has visibility across their entire network. So they can make really good decisions when they're trying to optimize their networks. That's great. It's really great. So I know you also have some security news as well, right? I'll let Jonathan talk right. to you. About Absolutely. It. As you may know, Verizon owns one of the largest privately owned IP networks in the world. At any given moment, we're supporting well over 70% of the world's IP traffic. And so what we're announcing is that we're using that network, that raw network capability to enhance our security offerings in two ways. In one, in terms of professional services, we're taking the threat and intelligence information, combining that with consulting services to help clients better understand their external facing internet infrastructure. You know, what types of vulnerabilities they have, what sort of holes they may have overlooked, you know, what are the risks that that client may face. And second, we're going to enhance our secure gateway firewall capability, which is a network-based firewall by integrating that with our premises-based service. So, so beginning in a, in a day or so, what you'll see uh, is from a client perspective, whether you have a premise-based firewall or a network-based firewall, it's a seamless experience. It'll be the same SLAs, the same policy, customized policy development capabilities, the same types of metrics, uh, same type of rigorous performance that clients are asking for. I mean, clearly cloud-based security is a huge buzzword, but you know, Verizon has been in cloud-based security for more than five years. We were the first carrier to develop a DOS protection capability, manage email and web content capability. You know, when you have that network, you can stand up cloud-based security because you have more than 200 data centers worldwide. You have security management centers around the world. Uh, it, it's hard to build cloud-based services if you don't own the cloud to begin with. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So it seems to me like there's a natural integration between what your, your groups are doing and the wireless side, which obviously is, is doing very well. Are there any things that you, you can talk about just in terms of some of those integrations that are happening? Well, well clearly, uh, in, in security, there, there's a convergence of, of logical security, physical security, and continuity. Within that realm is, is mobility solutions. And, and we're, we're looking at that today. We're looking at it from the perspective of an extended enterprise, a highly mobile distributed workforce. You know, how do you ensure security as these people roam, as they try to access corporate resources from all types of devices, for instance? So one of the things that that new gateway capability does, that firewall, is that it allows mobile workers, remote offices, as well as corporate sites to access corporate resources as well as the public internet in a secure fashion. It aggregates those, those, those access points into that gateway. Yeah. So that's one, that's one way that we integrate mobility and, and wireless in, into it. Yeah. Now are you, um, 
Are you seeing a, a lot more threats coming online lately? I know that uh, it seems like there are, every day there's a new sort of attack, whether it's phishing for Facebook, yep. passwords, or, sure. or breaking into Amazon accounts. I mean, what are you doing to offset that? Absolutely. Uh, I, I think one of the, the key findings in the first generation of security, when we said we would build a, a wall or keeps and put all that information behind that, and to the point where now we have an extended enterprise where everybody has access to that data and application, you realize you simply cannot protect all the data, all the in information against all the vulnerabilities and threats. So what we do is we help clients understand risk. We, we take a look at their network, their infrastructure, help them understand what is the most pernicious risk facing them, and then help them build a solution around that. Uh, clearly today, they're, they're, like you just said, there, there are an unknown number of vulnerabilities waiting to be exploited, for instance. Sure. In fact, most of the exploitations have already been discovered, but people have failed to, to patch, for instance. Right, so right. helping clients understand their current state provides a much more informed decision-making process for investment and, and, and mitigation uh, moving forward. That's great. So are there any other uh, things that, that customers can expect in the future, either from either of your groups or product lines that, that you're able to, to discuss? <laughs> that's, a, that's a loaded question. You know, I think from, a, from an IP perspective, uh, you know, we, we're continuing to see customers looking to, to, to innovate and to deploy new applications, uh, video conferencing, voice over IP, you know, those are the, the things that they're still continuing to look to do. So we will continue to enrich and enhance and expand, expand our network as much as we can um, in order to support our customers' requirements. And, and again, our services are global services. We're a global services company. So uh, being able to be where our customers need us to be with the right services, with the right network, um, with the right security measures in place uh, really brings a really rich solution to our customers. So, so to answer your question, no, I can't tell you anything. <laughs> That was a great answer. Yeah. I, I think for security, you'll, you'll see two trends. I, see, I think one, you'll see movement into the cloud for earlier detection and mitigation of threats before it ever reaches that client's prem. More integration of intelligence services because at some point, you know, managing and monitoring a firewall IDPS device is going to be commoditized. The, the real essence about managing risk and security is going to be understanding intelligence, understanding the network, discovering new threats right. and vulnerabilities, and then addressing that in the cloud before it ever reaches that client prem. So you'll see more services based in the cloud, you'll see more detection based in the cloud, and more intelligence from that cloud service. Yeah. That's great. It's well, all about the cloud. It's all, well, it's yeah. all about the network at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. It absolutely is. Yeah. It's all about the network. So thank you so much, Jonathan. Thank you, Danelli. This was great. Thank you. And, and thanks, thanks for being for on time. our show today. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure.